Director of Athletics at UCF, Terry Mohodger, joins us on 365 Sports. We've been fortunate to have Terry on before, back in the fall of 2021, of course, the, all of the changes. UCF, Houston, Cincinnati, Brigham Young eventually uh, lock in with the Big 12, and here we go with this upcoming uh, football season in the sports calendar, school calendar. Terry, thanks for your time. We appreciate it as well. We had that note yesterday about season tickets, and I think the number was 415. I'm sure it's gone down. And it seems like me talking to some at UCF that you're close to a sellout closer or earlier than normal. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, David, for inviting me on. I appreciate it. Yes, that's correct. When we sent out that tweet yesterday, it's 415, and I think we're already – we're probably we're at 99 percent sold out now i think we're at 99.5 um i think we sold probably 60 or 70 yesterday after i sent out that tweet so yeah we're real excited and we have sold out uh, a couple times before uh but never this early it's usually in august um so this is really exciting how much and, and, and yeah. look, you're awake though you're yeah. Waco. You know our, our our Big Twelve home opener this year is Baylor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. They know that. In fact, they got their spring yeah. game this week. I know you guys have had yours uh, as well. Uh, how it, is there still kind of an adrenaline rush? It, back in the fall of twenty one, that was huge, and then the schedule comes out. Is do you feel that adrenaline rush even now uh, when everything becomes official? I guess what is it, June the first or July the first? July, uh, July, yeah. July first. No, it's it's real exciting. Um, you know, it, it's it's you know we're we're preparing. I think that's it's really. I, I know as we get closer, August and when camp opens up, you're definitely going to feel a little bit more. But now we've got so much to prepare for. It's just like you're just working through the transition and trying to navigate through that. And, uh, but no, this is, it's, it's, it's really for the fans, the people that are around it every single day, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're real close to it, but the fans are very excited and just thrilled. And, you know, everybody's got their Big 12 logos on everything. And, and so it's really cool. By the way, a little side note that Baylor, the Baylor game this year, a home opener, that will be the 10, 10 year anniversary of the UCF Baylor Fiesta Bowl. Well, oh, Terry's throwing out, <laughs> throwing out, throwing out grenades here. Yeah. Well, I know. Oh, so, oh. You know. So that's like a big, that's like, I mean, so like one of the things that people are really oh. excited about is that the Blake Bortles quarterback, you mm-hmm. know, and that team come in. I'm not, not trying to throw shade, please. You know no, that. no, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Let me tell you. But it's, you, it's, 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 it's a different meaning because it's the 10-year anniversary. And really, I mean, honestly, that was, you, you, you talk about a lot of things that helped us get into the Big 12. That game will be one of the games that we go back and look in the history and the evolution of UCF as a pivotal time of, of UCF playing in that New Year's Six Bowl game against an unbelievable Baylor program. Yeah, you guys and, – and quite frankly, UCF dictated that thing from the beginning. It was uh, – it was a it, it, Bortles and company were very, very good. Yeah. Terry Mohodger, the AD at UCF, with us on 365 Sports. So Terry, you mentioned the process of transitioning into a new league. So what is that like now that, you know, a lot of people would think that, like, you're just, you know, on July 1st, you just, you know, walk into the office and you yeah. carry on as normal, but you're Big 12 now, but there's more to it than that, right? What is that we process? Put it, we, yeah, we just, well, we put a new sign on the door that says Big 12. <laughs> 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 no, uh, it, it's, it's, it's something we've been preparing for. And we actually are illustrating it on our website, on our microsite called Mission 12. And, I, you know, if you really kind of want to see, the, you know, uh, behind the scenes of what we're trying to do, basically we're, 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 we're um, you know, we're basically, um, you know, comparing uh, with the Big 12 operating, uh, operating budgets, uh, personnel, uh, you know, um, facilities, maintenance of facilities. And then, of course, NIL is the fourth prong now. It was three prong, prongs when we first got started. And so we're, go- we're going down four parallel tracks uh, that we have to do with to catch up. And think about this, guys. This, is, this will be interesting, you, and you may or may not know. And, it's, and we put this on the uh, Mission 12, one of the decks that we put out there, is out of the uh, – there's only five Power 5 teams that universities started in the 1900s. Mm. And we're one of them, only five. And so the rest of the teams that we're joining, except for Houston, because they're one of the power five teams, uh, is started and started playing sports in the 1800s. Started their university and started playing sports in the 1800s. So 
you know, we got some catch up to do. And, uh, you know, we still, we're, we don't become full share members until fiscal year 26. Uh, obviously, but we still, we're still, um, you know, still competing. Uh, there's, there, no one's going to take it easy on us because of that. So, uh, so little, really, it's, it's all about self-generated revenues right now for us in our, in our program. So we have, we have all, we have an illustrated and kind of a roadmap of how we're trying to get there. We're trying to get our, all of our sports into the top half of the big 12 for funding. Mm-hmm. So again, we're, we're working on capital, capital, operating capital, salaries and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then obviously facilities and maintenance, uh, Right after we were we were invited in the Big Twelve, uh, we played SMU, and I came down a little early, and I went to Baylor, and I went to TCU, and just kind of see what the kind of new facilities they have, and and so got a kind of a you know pretty good idea of, uh, of those. And I've worked in the Big Twelve twice, and I've been on every campus except Lubbock, and so I have a pretty good idea of what we're you know we're, you know what we're competing against, and uh, you know we I I also believe you know not only are, are we uh, very fortunate and very, very uh, excited to be in the league and, and be affiliated with such unbelievable and great institutions and great ADs and great coaches. Uh, but we also believe we bring a lot to the table uh, to the Big 12 um, and, and a region that is very excited. And I, 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 uh, we hear about the Governor DeSantis a lot in these days. And, the, and I, last week I went up to Tallahassee and gave him our, the first jersey with the Big 12 logo on it. Wow. Really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really yeah, cool. So, you mentioned yeah. the five schools. You're one of the five. Do you? Who are the other ones that are that started in the 1900s? Do you know? I think uh, I have to go back and look. It, it was us, uh, Houston, Miami. Um, Paul, would uh, Florida State be there? I think Florida, uh, Florida State existed. In a, yeah, yeah. For, they, so I think they were there. They're the university my started. It was a women's college, but I think it might have started prior. To. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it had a couple different That's versions of yeah. itself before yeah. it became what it is. It, yeah. Do you feel like the, what I would call the youthfulness and I hope people don't get that wrong. The, uh, the, how your school has risen and what it is now and what it brings to the table and, and the younger alumni, don't you think that might help even in a way like with Brett, your marks trying to bring a youth infusion into the conference? Uh, it's interesting. You say that actually, uh, Tyrell, their new CMO, Mark, chief marketing officer, he actually talks about us a lot. I mean, you know, I don't know if I remember uh, if it was your show, and I apologize if I'm repeating this, but uh, I've done some couple of Big Twelve shows. Um, is that we have we have 98 percent of our alumni are living still. Okay, mm-hmm. we have 350,000 alumni. We have 85, I think 85 percent of them live in the Central Florida area, and the average age of our alumni is 38. You're making me feel really old. I, I, I got a daughter. So, I have a daughter so very, who's like. So, so we're very youthful. So we talk about being youthful, uh, refreshing the Big Twelve. Uh, you know, we're the we're the state. You, thirty uh, percent of NASA's employees are are our our universe our, our alumni. This university was started uh, for the uh, the um, the Kennedy Space Center, and so it was. I mean, our fifty yard line lines up directly parallel to 39A launch pad. Mm. And that was done on purpose. So we got a lot of really cool things in Florida. That, and I think so it's, uh, and obviously the region, the citrus, the citrus area. And, and uh, so, you know, you'll see coming up this year, uh, the space game we have every year where you see the Citronaut. That was the, that was the name that we had at one time before we became the Knights. Citron, citrus area and astronaut, Citronaut. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I do love it. Now, someone on our chat room said that the Air Force Academy might have been a post-1900 university. Uh, they might have. But, I, hey, listen. Well, I, well they had I, to have I, been. I, I'm, I'm sure they can fact check me. Uh, this is just what we have, and we could be wrong. Well, but they're uh, not a power five. Well, but not a power five. Yeah. Air Force Academy is yeah, a great a institution. Five. but. Uh, uh, Texas Tech started in 1923, so they might be in that conference. Texas I, I think, may be, I think yeah. Texas Tech may be one of them. Yeah. So, to, so yeah. The, the money, what you are getting in the American conference, and I know there's a buyout figure, and I don't know how that's spread out or how one chunk or four, whatever, but now you're going to get uh, not all, but a nice chunk your first year in the Big 12, and eventually that's going to get up. You know the numbers, the new extension that Brett Yormark negotiated, and then also college football playoff. 
How much of an infusion is all of that to all of the other things you answered Paul's question about the growth uh, in facilities and staff and much more? Well, okay, say that again. <laughs> so you, you're going to get, what is it, your first year in the Big 12, was it like 18 or yeah. 19 million? You, yeah, you, yeah. So, so yeah, so we, we agreed to come in. We, we got a buyout of the American that's been chronicled out there. So, I mean, it's, it's 18, it's 19 the second year, and then you become a full share member. I mean, right. I'm not telling you anything. And, um, and I, I've, I've talked about it in some of the media outlets before. Uh, you know, so we, but you know, but you, you know, your travel's different, your personnel's different, you're trying to catch up some of the, some of the staff. I mean, it's just, you know, once you, and what you're already getting paid in the American, we were roughly getting close to $9 million in the, the American. So you're not talking about a lot more money. Of course, it's, you know, when you have to self generate, you know, adding another 10 million or $9 million to your budget, always good. Uh, but it's not something when you start looking at, you know, your charters, your, uh, you know, everybody chartering where we haven't done that in the past. You're getting your staff up, paying your coaches a little higher, trying to get, you know, almost every one of our women's sports are in the top quarter or top third of the Big 12 now. And then, you know, we still got a lot of work to do with uh, uh, men's basketball, baseball, and football. So. As far as your, like, overall land that you have to cover for you guys that are coming in for the American, you guys have had kind of crazy travel schedules anyway. So the big 12 doesn't really change things that much for you. Does it? No, not, not really. I think that what really changes is the way that the, the big 12 cha- travels. Um, we've chartered before men's and women's basketball, but you know, because of our location, we have two, two airports here. We didn't always travel to every, I mean, charter every game. Now you're chartering to every, game almost plus you know even some of your volleyball programs some of your soccer programs some of your baseball programs are also charting well i mean you know a, a 30 person uh charter is you know almost eighty thousand dollars you know so it's it's significantly different in, 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 in cost and you know adding coaches and adding personnel adding content people um you know we have a buyout still uh that we have to pay uh you have a buy-in of the big 12 um so i mean it's it's the travels, you know, but it's just how you travel is a little different, um, you know. So, um, you know, uh, that's really t- some of the bigger, 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 uh, bigger price items that we have. Okay, here it is, guys: UCF, UCLA, Miami, Texas Tech, and Houston. Those U- are the five. UCF, teams. UCLA, Miami, Texas Tech, and Texas Houston. Texas Tech and Houston. That's awesome. All right, good to know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terry, there are rivalries in Florida, and I know you want to have more of them. Uh, will you be able to do the I-4 rivalry in other sports outside of football? Well, we won't have consistent um, competition, you know, with I-4 where you're playing them in every sport. Um, even, you know, when you play Florida or Miami or Florida State, they're, they're one-offs. You may play them in basketball one year. You may play them in baseball. Uh, it's, it's just harder to do that. Um, you know, uh, we may do it. We may look at doing something with Houston. Um, you know, they have, you know, obviously they're, they're, uh, they have something in the space. They have a lot of uh, connections to space as well. A lot of their engineers are part of their space program, uh, there. So we may do something like that. Maybe make a big deal about that, but really it's going to be harder to usually those, those partner cups, you're playing them in every sport, but we're happy to say, that we we uh, we after our women's golf team yesterday beat USF, we now clinched it. So that's great. Seven years seven years in a row, we never lost to them. So that was good. A uh, couple more things. I know you got to go. Uh, Grant McCaslin's name's been in the news because of the run he did at North Texas. He was a part of yeah. both Texas Tech and Baylor staff. You hired him, right, uh, as a basketball yeah. coach at the Arkansas State. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hired him from Baylor. He was an assistant at Baylor. Had many many conversations with Scott Drew about it, so which I which I'm a big fan of him, and uh, yeah, many conversations when we hired Grant. Uh, Grant is a not a good coach; he is an excellent coach, great communicator, great recruiter. Uh, you just you know really good teacher. It was great. I'm so happy for him. We've been texting back and forth, and and uh, um, I'm really happy for Kirby Holcutt too. He's you know I. I don't like to compete against him, mm-hmm. but uh, I know he's really good. And I think he's going to do some really outstanding things in the Big 12. 
All right, so I really, I, I really do. I got to know if you're in the same room or phone conversation with Scott Drew, who has never seen a bad day in his life, and he is very much, as you know, full throttle, and you are too. How does that conversation ever stop? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, you know it. It, it, it is. He, he is a just a super good guy. You know, and I we go way back. I knew him when he was the head coach of Valpo, mm. and and I was at UMKC. And his dad, he worked for his dad, and a guy we hired at another school, Rex Walters, was his assistant coach at Valparaiso. And uh, um, so, I mean, it's just you know the family's really uh, knew his sister. Uh, really a great family, and uh, he's just a good guy to talk to. And, you know, we go to Big 12 meetings last year and, and uh, you know, had, had a little time with him. And I, I, I saw him in the airport one time. The time was just, he's just one of the easiest uh, guys to talk to, and he's uh, super, super nice. And uh, I know you guys know uh, uh, Bayless was excited to have him. So No question uh, what he's done. If, if – um... If you had a scale of one to ten about joining the Big Twelve, what would the number be? You mean like excitement level? Yeah. Well, ten is of course. I was gonna. Think, I thought you were gonna How say like a hundred. Okay, yeah. 20, <laughs> there you go. There you go. I was just. How about 12? Uh, yeah, there yeah. you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Terry, we appreciate it. We're excited. I can't wait for this new conference to start. The first year is going to be a little bit different because Texas and OU, of course, with another year left. But man. It is going to be a sledgehammer in every way possible across the board. I I, I look forward to seeing how all of it falls. Well, hey, I got one question for you. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you got? What are, What are people in Waco saying about all the new teams coming in? Oh, I think that honestly, because they were held hostage, can in a way for a long, long time with decisions and power struggles and all that, and with Texas and Oklahoma initially, it's like, oh, my God, what? where are we going to land? And then, of course, the opportunity and the way that Bob Bowlesby reacted with the four new schools, I think everybody has been thrilled. There's some schools that maybe people say this or that about. I've heard nothing negative at all about UCF okay. and Orlando and, and the fact that, that they'll have a, a flag inside that state that's so fertile with incredible talent. I have not oh, heard yeah. anything there uh, at all. I think outside of people maybe being a little sad you won't play people you grew up playing. Yeah. I don't think that that – I think that's the – like that's the one little, you know, pimple on this whole thing if there is one because everybody else is just fired up, especially to come – like to go to four new cities, uh, all of which are cool places to go watch games. Like, the, no, yeah. like you know, it's, it's great. Like I, I think people – um, you know, have seen, you know, the bounce house on TV and know how fired up that place gets. So they know that when they go there, it's going to be a fun thing. Um, and nobody needs another excuse to go to Orlando, uh, Terry, as you know, uh, but yeah. that they have one now is going to be great. I think it's, I think it's going to be great for your city and a great for your university all the way around. So everybody's, everybody's super fired up about it. It, it was good. I went to the big 12 uh, basketball tournament this year. We had some meetings up there. I was there and I want, I walked around on Wednesday and Thursday and I had my UCF stuff on. We did a couple of interviews. And the amount of people, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State fans, everybody was just – Oklahoma State fans, just great um, about – just so positive. Like, hey, can't wait to come to Orlando. It's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's really a cool thing. And then you got an innovative guy like Brett Yormark that is uh, really thinking about how we do business in a little different way, maybe a non-traditional way our conference does business. And you got really talented – ADs that mm -hmm. we get to us uh, four ADs get to join, which is and and by the way, three of the AD, two of the ADs I know uh, well. And I know Tom Homo, the uh, former you know head coach oh, of yeah. the Cal Bears, and he's bring he brings a lot of football knowledge. Played in the NFL for a long time. I mean, just and just an outstanding person as well, high integrity, and so we're 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 just thrilled, man, to 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 join the club and and uh, be a part of it. And so we uh, we look forward to. And, and cherish the time we'll spend in the in, in Big 12 uh, footprint. I've said I know you've had to go like three times, but this is it, I promise. Have you, <laughs> like, here you guys are entering, officially July 1st. Is there, what would you say at all, is it somewhat on your radar about what's happening with the possible growth even further west? Is that even something, how does that affect someone like you on the East Coast if that was to ever happen? Yeah, I think it. it it, we definitely think about it, and it's very positive. I mean, you know, if that if that's ever happened, you know, I think you know Brett Yormark said it best. We're open for business, and 
uh, I think we are the future of college. I think our conference is the future of college athletics. Uh, I really do, based on some of the demographics, where we are, the tradition of some of these, of some of the uh, academic programs, the athletic programs, the youthfulness of some of the new teams coming in. And uh, I, I, I think that we're, we're an unbelievable conference to join. I think you're, you're, I think people are already talking about it and you, you hear and you read all the stuff that I do. I don't have any, you know, anything mm-hmm. to share, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, we look at from a standpoint of, you know, from a football, if you ever went West, you know, you get on the plane once every two years, you go West or whatever, or how many teams you play, you know, geography is not necessarily about how far it is, and how long it takes to get there. And, you know, the, the, the challenge is some of your Olympic sports that might, you know, but, you know, when you're in the Midwest and, um, and you're traveling to, you know, Lubbock or Iowa state, Hey, what's another, you know, hour, yeah. you know, <laughs> Terry, uh, Sell them out. Get those last few tickets done. I look forward to I that. Think, you know what? I think we're at 99.7 now. That's awesome. Just well, have, just like being right on this show. I think it, I <laughs> think we I think we absolutely we'll wait for that commission check. We're joking. Thank you, man. <laughs> Can't wait. Thanks for Appreciate your time. You guys. Terry Thanks, Mohajer, AD, Director of Athletics at UCF. Man, it, you could you could feel 